do integrals and the chain rule work together here in chapter 5.1? Well, let's think about it. What's the integral of sine 5x squared dx? Go ahead and guess, that's fine. Uh, you might guess that it's, well, integral of sine is cosine? Nope, it's negative cosine. And we might guess that we'd copy that. So that's not a bad guess. What do we do when we guess? We check it. So what's the derivative of all that? Go ahead and take the derivative of negative cosine 5x squared. Okay, are you back? The negative stays there. Derivative of cosine itself is negative sine. Hey, this is looking good. Negative negative sine is sine. 5x squared times the derivative of the inside, 5x squared prime. So we're getting positive sine 5x squared times 5 times 2x, which is not in my original integral, is it? Darn. Um, so you know, highlighting that this, this part comes from the chain rule. And this is not what we started with, so our guess did not work out. So negative cosine 5x squared is not the antiderivative of um, sine 5x squared. Okay, so if the chain rule ends up involved in an integral problem, we need fancier stuff, and that happens in chapter 6. So uh, you can only use the chain rule in integral problems in chapter 6. We're not going to deal with it here in chapter 5. So um, say you can only use the chain rule in integral related problems. In chapter 6 and later. Um, if an integral seems to need the chain rule, try simplifying first. So if you had something like integral of x squared minus x over x dx. Um, would you want to use the quotient rule? Well, it turns out there's no nice quotient rule for integrals. There is a quotient rule for integrals, but basically nobody has it memorized. Um, so uh, we'll say there's no nice quotient rule for integrals. Um, uh, you might also see this as a chain rule problem if you brought the x up as a negative, negative 1 power. Um, but what you could do is simplify because you could say let's cross out the 2 and write a 1. Let's cross out the x and write a 1. Cross out the x and write a 1. And so you get the integral of x minus 1 over 1 dx which is the integral of x minus 1, which is 1 half x squared minus x plus c. So we're just taking the integral of this term by term. Integral of x is 1 half x squared. Integral of minus 1 is minus x. So let's practice the idea of simplifying about the integral of root 5x dx. Well, you could write that as a power rule, uh, x, 5x to the 0 0.5. And what would you guess the answer is? So let, let's take this two ways. We might guess 
that um, we could use the power rule and say 1 over 1.5 5x to the 1.5. To check that, we would need the chain rule, and we would get an extra factor of 5, and it just wouldn't work. So what can we do instead? Well, we can break up this power. We can say 5x to the 0.5 is 5 to the 0.5x to the 0.5 dx. And then that's just a constant. So I could move it out of the integral if I wanted. x to the 0.5 dx. And then that's 5 to the 0.5. What's the integral of? 0.5 x to the 0.5 it's x to the 1.5 1 over 1.5 and it seems reasonable how would you check it by taking the derivative by hand and you can also do it in desmos so Remember, we can't just use an integral sign like this plane in Desmos. We'll see in chapter uh, 5.2 how you can use an integral sign in Desmos. But for now, I'd say f of x equals little f of x equals root 5x. Big f of x equals what I got here. 5 to the 0.5, 1 over 1.5, x to the 1.5. And I actually wouldn't type the plus c there. And then if I say big F prime of x, what should that do? The derivative of my antiderivative should do what? Should exactly overlap little f of x. So that's one way to check antiderivatives in Desmos, is type in the original formula type in your by hand antiderivative and you have to give it a name like capital F is a good name and then uh, tell it to take the derivative of capital F and hopefully you'll see a graph that's exactly your original formula.